Well, Fox News is once again creeping on Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's Instagram feed, and after she said something that is perfectly reasonable and rational about climate change, they decided to construct a five-person panel to explain why everything she said is wrong. Take a look. Allowing sea levels to rise, every coastal city to go underwater, every Midwestern city or large swaths of the middle of the country experiencing drought on a level that we have not seen, um, that's going to be way more expensive. We need to bite the bullet on the cost because the alternative to not spending the money is A, death, and B, spending even more money. Freshman Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez claiming on Instagram that her $93 trillion Green New Deal could actually be cheap in comparison to the ultimate cost of climate change. So is Ocasio-Cortez right? Uh, David, she reminds me of Cotton Mather and some of those old fire and brimstone preachers of old that we're, Earth is going to flood, fires, fires are going to consume us if we don't repent. Uh, no, she's uh, full of nonsense. You take the Paris Accord, if you a actually analyze it, it spends a lot of money with very little result. You look at uh, wind, wind power, 900 tons of steel in one of those windmills, 45,000 pounds of plastic you can't but recycle. But do they give cancer windmills? Uh, do no, they give cancer? They, yes, they, 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 they make it, your guy that you, speaks you make, to You make power. their head, head, head spoil. Okay, I just want to make sure yeah. you're at least speaking accurate on some things. Oh, you know, David, wow. she started that. She, she, she Naughty said, boy. let me jump in here. She started, <laughs> she started that post. Yeah, watch out, Steve. Watch to your right there. She started that post talking about how she wakes up at 3.30 in the morning. It's sad she's losing sleep, worried. I get that. I wake up at 3.30 in the morning, too, worried about what cockamamie ideas AOC is going to come up with in any given day. Because now it's like, OK, let me defer the attention from the crazy cost of my Green New Deal to say, well, if we don't do this, it's going to make the Green New Deal look so cheap. And to Steve's point, we, have sp we were supposed to run out of water by now. We were supposed to have massive floods by now. We were supposed to be out of oil by now. None of that's happened because of corporate ingenuity in a business that she wants to curtail because she wants to control it, not allow the corporations to make things better. I think that's really true. I mean, I think it's always depressing that people who are so worked up about climate change, and let's, let's agree that for millennials and so forth, the younger people, they really are concerned about this. And I don't think it's appropriate or probably the right approach to just mock that concern. But I think you have to have a little optimism that some of these challenges are going to be met uh, and the damage, you know, fixed by corporations and by scientists who are now working on these things. I mean, honestly, the, this the problem with environmental movement is they have raised these alarms in such an over the top fashion for the last 20 years that people basically tune out. Yes, everyone agrees and they vote that this is a big concern. But then when it really comes down to wanting spending, you know, raising taxes to alleviate a problem or something like that, voters don't chime in because we're all sort of immune to this yeah. uh, this scaremongering. So, uh, you know, a lot to think about there. One, I appreciate Liz bringing up how younger people think because that's one of the debates I have all the time. I was not for the Green New Deal. I'm for a Green New Deal. I don't think you put the whole kitchen sink of health care and labor part of climate change. I'm for the Paris Accord. I do think that young people like AOC and many others, this is at the top of her list. It's not keeping me up what AOC says like it is Scott. You know, I don't think about what she's saying every night. I actually like her passion, but I actually think that I don't think spending $93 trillion is really anything that's ever going to happen. So I think well, we, would, have to, and, and we do, have to put it in, in perspective and it here. Do, and it would do far more harm than good. It yeah, would I wreck would the economy. That's not the way you uh, treat climate change. I have watched so many Fox News segments where they dogpile on AOC and that's got to be one of the dumbest because I think the irony just flew right over their heads. And look, I already know the first thing that stood out to me is probably going to be what stood out to you as well. When that guy said that she's like one of those old fire and brimstone preachers who say the earth is going to flood, fires are going to consume us if we don't repent. The Amazon is literally on fire as we speak. 
Furthermore, he's saying all of this as Fox News literally tracks the progress of Hurricane Dorian on the screen. And increased frequency and greater intensity of these hurricanes is, in fact, largely attributed to climate change. But I mean, according to this idiot, she's Chicken Little and she's telling everyone that the sky is falling and the earth is flooding and the world is burning as it's doing just that. He is the <laughs> human embodiment of that this is fine meme. As the house burns, you're sitting there telling yourself that everything is just peachy keen and you don't want to realize what's actually going on. He then says that the Green New Deal spends a lot of money with very little result. Well, what I say to that is citation needed. You don't know how effective the Green New Deal will or won't be. None of us do. We don't know if it's actually going to mitigate climate catastrophe. We don't know that. We're just hopeful. We're crossing our fingers. So to say, oh, it spends too much and doesn't do what it needs to do, you don't know that. You don't have a crystal ball. You don't know what all of us don't know. You can't see into the future. All that we can do is prepare for the worst, hope for the best, period. Now, another guy said that, you know, AOC stated that she wakes up at 3 a.m. worried about climate change, but, you know, he has to wake up at 3 a.m. to uh, worry about what type of cockamamie ideas AOC will come up with next. To me, that just sounds like she's living in your head rent-free, and that's a good thing. I hope that some of her ideas will resonate with you. I hope that her voice echoes in your head, so maybe one of those ideas will actually penetrate that thick skull, and you'll think about doing better with your life before you go on Fox News and do anti-climate change propaganda like this. Hopefully, something she says will resonate, but I mean, if you're on Fox News, odds are you're already paid to not um, let these ideas break through because Fox News is about defending the status quo. The status quo being the Republican Party who takes millions of dollars every single year in campaign contributions from the oil and gas industry. So kindly shut the fuck up. I don't care what you have to say. I don't care if you think AOC's ideas are crazy. If you believe that climate change is not a serious issue, it's not AOC who's crazy. You're the one with a cockamamie idea, you dumb motherfucker. Now, one lady said that you have to have optimism that climate change will be solved by corporations. <laughs> <laughs> That's like relying on an arsonist to put out fires. Hate to break it to you, but uh, corporations, they created this problem. Just 100 corporations emit 71% of global greenhouse gas emissions. If you honestly believe that anything short of government intervention will get them to do better, you are horribly mistaken. I mean, some of these companies, their entire business model is based off of destroying the planet. So why on earth would they, in a system where global capitalism reigns supreme, do anything that would stifle their ability to increase short-term profits? They won't do that, and to suggest that it will shows how naive you are. There's no, you know, lack of optimism. The world is dying. The planet is becoming uninhabitable before our very eyes. I'm sorry if you feel like we're not being optimistic enough, but it's difficult to be optimistic when there's idiots like you going on Fox News spreading this misinformation about climate change and still promoting this idea that climate change isn't even real or maybe it's not anthropogenic. So, I mean, <laughs> forgive us for not being too optimistic right now. And the problem is that even the most reasonable person on this panel wasn't great. He said, you know, I'm not really for a Green New Deal. I'm more of a Paris Climate Accord type of guy. I'm paraphrasing, of course, but bad news for you, bud. That's not enough. The Paris Climate Accord is not going to stop climate catastrophe. It's not going to stop us from warming the planet to two degrees Celsius. Not going to happen. So if you don't support the Green New Deal or something on the scale of the Green New Deal, then you absolutely are not taking this issue seriously enough. Now, what's interesting is that Fox News kept bringing up this $93 trillion statistic. That's how much they say the Green New Deal would cost. Now, it's interesting how they say that same number, but the Republican Party also says that same number. It's almost like Fox News and the Republican Party are in cahoots, and they're not even trying to hide that fact anymore. Now, this number is based off of a right-wing think tank that said the cost of AOC's Green New Deal, if you account for climate-specific policies, as well as climate adaptation policies like Medicare for All, which will be needed to address the new health crises that emerge if climate change is in fact as bad as we are anticipating. But 
the number actually from that study is between 50 and 93 trillion. But of course, they're going to cite the furthest on that spectrum because as they denounce AOC's quote unquote fear mongering, they're fear mongering themselves. Instead of it being about the climate, they're fear mongering about the debt and the deficit. But even if you only opt for the environmental portions of the Green New Deal and forego policies needed to adapt, like Medicare for All, well, Bernie Sanders' plan, according to his own estimate, would cost $16 trillion, but here's the best part. It pays for itself within 15 years. Now, this hasn't been scored by economic or environmental groups yet, so we're just taking Bernie Sanders at his word. But the idea behind Bernie's plan, at least, is to construct a Green New Deal that is bold, it's comprehensive, but it also pays for itself because this is an investment. We're not just spending money for the sake of spending money, we're investing in the economy and we are expecting a return on that investment. So why didn't they bring up that statistic? Obviously, because that doesn't suit uh, the narrative that they're pushing, which is we need to worry about the deficit and the debt. So fear mongering is bad, uh, except when it comes to the uh, debt and the deficit and um, immigrants and also uh, terrorists. So we should probably invade every other country. Now, of course, they didn't say that, but that's what Fox News would tell you if you watch any other segment on Fox News. So these people are absolutely disingenuous. And at this point, I think we call Fox News what it is. They are dangerous now, not just to the country, because they are attacking any and everyone that speaks out about climate change. And really, to be fair, this isn't only about climate change, the Fox News. They just see AOC as one of their biggest political opponents, and they should because she is a threat to the Republican Party. But with that being said, I mean, what they say is not intellectual. They're not educating their viewers. They're just espousing pure stupidity. I mean, to say that she's like a fire and brimstone preacher who says the world is going to flood and burn and the world is kind of flooding and burning right now. I mean, maybe she's not like these fire and brimstone preachers because what she's saying is actually coming to fruition. Whereas with these fire and brimstone preachers, there's still not evidence that God exists. So, I mean, Fox News, I don't know what to say about them anymore. I can come on here every single day and tell you, how, you know, they're just pure propaganda for the Republican Party. They're a joke. But the issue is that people take them seriously. They are number one in all of cable news. And while that still only amounts for a small portion of the country, that's still enough to where they can have a tremendous sway over politics. They can bolster, you know, the Republican Party as they do what is the agenda of the fossil fuel industry, which is antithetical to, you know, the planet. Uh, and the survivability of human beings. So it, it's destructive, and I think that more so than ever, we have to call out this type of rhetoric, and whenever somebody shits on an ally who's talking about climate change, we have to hit back and hit back hard, because this is detrimental right now to all of our species. This isn't something that just affects the left. Climate change affects all of us. And these old geezers on the panel may not be around to see the worst of what climate change has to offer, but a lot of us will. Future generations, their grandchildren will. So it's incumbent on us to call them out and push back against this dangerous rhetoric because these idiots are going to get us all killed all for the short-term profits of the fossil fuel industry at the expense of the long-term health and safety of our planet and species. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.